Right now, this afternoon, it's time for Blue Peter, and it's the tale of the missing Blue Peter tape. So we explore the past and future of the video recorder. If you miss that address but you've recorded the show, you could always rewind the tape and have another look. Nowadays, if you really want to watch something on the telly, then there's no real problem. You can just stick a tape in and off you go. But you can end up just like Meg and myself, surrounded by stacks of bulky, dusty tapes. Never quite sure what you've recorded on them, or quite frankly, where anything is. And of course, the picture and the sound quality of tapes is never as good as it is on live TV. But it won't be long before tapes like these are a thing of the past. Well, look at this. You're absolutely right. If you've got around £200 to spare, then you can ditch those dodgy old VHSs and settle down to enjoy a system like this one. Now, it is really simple to use. You just need your remote control to find the programme that you want to watch and record. All programmes. Let's go and find Blue Peter. And then you need to highlight it and it will record it for you. Now, your only limitation is the hard drive. It does have a hard drive, which works just like your computer, but at the moment, this one has only got 20 hours worth of recording in it. But the best thing about it is the quality and the sound is perfect. But if you do want to keep anything that you have already recorded, then you can do so by downloading it onto a cassette or a recordable DVD. All in all, recording from the telly has come a very long way from the days of this, which I'm just going to turn on for you now. Has it come on? It has indeed. Lovely. Uh, it's one of the first the video recorders designed for home use. This used, as you can see, an open reel system, and the results weren't really very good, especially by today's standards. As you can see, when Blue Peter put the brand new gizmo to the test way back in October 1966. Here we go. Oh, isn't that splendid? Right. Great, isn't it? Um, well, my name is Valerie Singleton, and I appear on a programme called Blue Marvelous. Peter. By the early 1970s, colour recording had come in, and here's one of the machines on offer. Now, each tape could only record 60 minutes, and as well as the expense of the machine, the tapes cost a lot too. By 1973, there was still a novelty, as you can tell from this Blue Beetle moment when presenter Peter Purvis was showing viewers a deluxe new bus for travelling businessmen. Now, just listen to the way he pronounces video. On this side of the bus here, there is a colour television set, and next to that, there is a videotape recorder. Ah, video. Now, it wasn't until the late 1970s that companies began to seriously market video recorders, and here is an advert. Now, a battle soon developed between two rival systems, the Betamax, which looked like this, and the VHS. Now, there are no prizes for guessing which system won, although the picture and sound quality of the Betamax was actually better. Of course, videotapes were nothing new for TV companies. They first came into use in the late 1950s. They were called quads or two inches, and they were huge and very heavy. Oh, I think I'll just pop that down. Now, they cost a fortune too, so they were used quite sparingly and often reused. Now, you can see one reason why on this clip from an early TV show. It has a crackly, scratched-looking quality. Now, this is because it was much cheaper to record programmes onto film. And if you're thinking that most old TV programmes still exist, then think again, because over the years, literally thousands of irreplaceable television treasures were junked or destroyed. Now, this was largely because people just didn't imagine a day when all TV programmes might fill whole channels or be issued on tapes and discs. Now, Blue Peter is actually luckier than most. Most of our films and tapes exist from around the mid-1960s onwards, but there is nothing left of the first five years of the programme. In recent years, the BBC has spent millions of pounds carefully transferring the now priceless tapes that survived the mass junkings of the 1960s and 70s. Good news 
good news. But unfortunately, accidents do happen. Now, recently, we decided to look at an old Blue Peter from December 1980, which, according to our records, should exist in the BBC's videotape library. On one of these, a one-inch master tape. But then it was discovered that disaster had struck. The tape had been mixed up with some others and accidentally destroyed, which meant it was lost forever. But we then did some more investigating, which turned into a bit of a treasure hunt. First of all, although the master tape had gone for good, a black and white film recording of the programme did still exist. Now, these were made so that instead of calling up a big, bulky tape and booking expensive viewing time, Blue Peter could simply order up the film copy to play back on a machine like this. In those days, all of our outdoor reports were shot on colour film and the library found that as well as the black and white film recording of the missing episode, it still had the colour film that had been played into it. How good is that? That is good, but the final link in the chain was this. It's a VHS recording which had been made for the Blue Peter office direct from the colour master tape a few years before it was accidentally destroyed. Now, with all of these elements, the BBC's top librarian suggested a restoration using the very latest techniques. BBC Television Centre in London has miles of corridors and lots of rooms devoted to recording, transferring and editing videotapes. In fact, it's like a labyrinth in here and all too easy to get lost. The BBC Archive has over 2.3 million items of television material and is one of the largest collections in the world. I went to Edit Suite 11, where one of the BBC's most skilled technicians, Jonathan Wood, was already hard at work restoring Blue Peter episode 1620 from the 4th of December 1980. Now, how are we going to sort this out? Well, we've got to take the black and white film and the colour VHS and combine them in a way to produce a broadcast colour version to go back into the archives. So if we go over there, we've got some devices to help us do that. The main problem is the, um, there's a difference in size and shape of the image between the black and white film and the colour VHS version. Oh, that makes my eyes go funny. <laughs> The easiest way to align the two images, the colour source and the black and white film, is to turn the colour VHS into black and white as well, but make it a negative, like a negative photograph. Then overlay the two. So if you look at that now, that's way out. So if you want to have a go with that, <gasps> just see if you can line up that top right corner. Two images aligning, that's it, you're getting closer there. Uh, that's oh, it, all oh, back, oh, back oh. to the left slightly. Oh. <laughs> that's it, that's very good. Now you've got those two images aligned perfectly, we can put the colour back in and then it all lines up. Brilliant. But that wasn't all. We had to use another piece of equipment for the next part of the restoration process. OK, what we have here is the opening titles of this programme, um, which came off this roll of 16mm film. And here is just 10 frames of 16mm film. So you can imagine on there, if there's any uh, speck of dust or dirt on that, by the time it's blown up to a TV sized image, it's going to be a big mark on the screen. Mm. So, what we can do is use this device to get rid of those. If you want to just take that control there and see if we can find a mark. Oh, there. yeah, there's one. Yeah, up there. Oh. Keep going. Oh, there's one. There's, there's, one. there's... Oh, yeah, one little... there's loads. There is. If you just jog onto that one on the ship that's down okay. there. Right. Now, if you want to grab hold of that pen, and put it down on the pad and you'll see a little cursor appear. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, if you move over there and literally draw over that blemish... So I just colour it in? Yes. <laughs> That's great. That's right. It's gone. And we can compare with what we had before and now it's gone. So you have to do that for every single frame? I'm afraid so and there's uh, quite a few. Uh, and in fact, in a 25-minute programme, we have been able to remove about 3,000 marks. So how long will it take to restore the whole programme? Um, at an estimate, I'd say probably about a couple of days. So I'd better get on with it. <laughs> well, that was a few days ago. Let's have a look now at what Jonathan has managed to achieve and we'll give you a comparison of before and after. Oh, 
incredible job. He did clever, good, didn't he? Didn't he? Just brilliant. And uh, this, the newly restored master tape of what nearly was a missing bit of Blue Peter history, will be put safely back in our video tape library straight after the show. And hopefully, it'll still be there for many years to come. Yeah. Well, that's it for today's show, but make sure you don't miss Monday's programme. It's our last live show in this series, and we'll be making a big announcement when we tell you where we're going for this year's summer expedition. Oh, it's very exciting, and you can <laughs> see my report on the Golden Lion Tamarind Monkeys of Brazil. He's a tester. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Getting something now. Nice one, guys. Let's hope they don't lose that episode.